Welcome back to Hard Money. Joining me now is Dr. Jeff Ross, our favorite pleb counselor and founder of Valeshire Capital Management. Jeff, talk about volatility in Bitcoin and stocks all across the board. And you tweeted this week, Dr. Bear is back. What are you seeing? <laughs> Well, thanks for having me back on the show, Natalie. Um, so, so what am I seeing? You know, the markets have been looking uh, pretty impressive over the last couple of months. Basically, they bottomed in mid June, and then we had a hard rally for about two months in the equities markets. Bitcoin also rallied; it's still up about twenty percent from its lows. Um, but the data still looks really ugly. The macro data is still pointing to a serious recession coming. I look at things like what is the uh, the Treasury yield looking like? What's the yield curve doing? It is still suggesting to me, at least, that a, a serious recession is um, is inevitable, not necessarily imminent, but inevitable. And so at some point that's coming. And when I look at other things, like how is the consumer doing? How are small businesses doing? Is our, our businesses hiring right now? Are they freezing? Are they laying off people? Every sign I look at points to there's still downside to come. So even though we've had a really nice relief rally across risk assets, I think unfortunately that we're going to see more downside to come. So the, the the momentum overall is still quite bearish, which makes me a little bit bearish in the short term, at least. Well, something you mentioned on Twitter this week that you're watching is nearly 25% of U.S. businesses are, quote, zombie companies, unable to even afford the interest payments on their debt. The previous record you said for zombies was 17% set back in 2001. You said this will not end well. Can you elaborate? Sure. So I want to give credit first. That chart came from Stansbury Research. So good work uh, by them to do that. Basically, what that's saying is out of the in the Russell 3000, so the top 3000 companies in the US, 25% of them are not even able to service their debt uh, currently. And so what they're relying on is constantly rolling over their debt and having creditors who are willing to allow them to roll over debt. The downside is interest rates rise, the cost of their debt goes even higher. And so at some point, the creditors just say, you know what? we're just not willing. We were looking at your business. I don't think you're going to be able to pay us back uh, in, in, you know, in the next round, the next year, next couple of years or so. We're not going to give you any more money. And when that happens, those businesses go under. And that's when we start to see a wave of defaults and a wave of bankruptcies. So based on that data, at least, we may see the largest wave of defaults ever uh, here in the United States. And that's not going to be pretty. Wow, that is a bold statement. Well, we're also seeing a major slowdown in the housing market. Can you offer any perspective on just how bad things are? Because my understanding is even though we have a real estate bubble, we actually aren't as leveraged in that area with mortgages as we were back in 08. Is that right? Yeah, even though the residential real estate market is clearly rolling over, and it is, demand is down significantly, supply is actually starting to perk up for the first time in a while, people just aren't, aren't able to go out and uh, get mortgages. When, when, when the mortgage rate has increased basically by 100% from about 3% to about 6% in the last nine months or so, it just makes housing that much more unaffordable. Now, it, this is not, to your point, this is not 2008 all over again. This is not the great financial crisis. We do not have a whole... Uh, a massive amount of subprime mortgages out there, people who can't afford to pay their debts. Uh, this time is different. And by, by different, I mean, I think we're going to see a significant decrease in prices of real estate, but it's not going to be a catastrophe. It won't be a crisis. I think prices are going to come down and it's actually healthy. So for real estate itself, I think we're going to see a healthy reset. So at, at the end of this recession, real estate will just be affordable, especially for millennials and Gen Zers who are trying to get out there and buy their first house. Um, they've been priced out so far, but I think in the next year or two or three, uh, they may actually be able to afford a house, uh, a house again, and that'll be a great thing. Wow, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, well, what else are you tracking as we await the, the uh, Federal Reserve's pal this Friday from Jackson Hole giving us an update? Yeah, my guess is what he's going to come out. I think he's going to come out swinging like a real hawk. I think he's going to say, you know what? The market celebrated too early. Um, with inflation, this battle with inflation is not over yet. Yes, it came down a little bit, down to 8.5% in the last reading, but inflation is still going to be sticky high. So I think that's what he's going to come out saying. He's going to try to dampen the spirits of uh, the equity market rally and, and what we've been seeing across Bitcoin and crypto and such. Um, so I would expect the markets to not respond very well to 
that. And I think that's why we may see an end to this short-term rally that has been pretty impressive. Uh, but I think when he comes out and, and emphasizes to Americans that, look, we have a long ways to go, we're still going to be raising rates significantly. He may even hint that, you know what, we may, to, we, we may need to raise uh, the federal funds rate another 75 bips. So it'd go up from about two and a half percent up to 3.25 percent. And right now, by the way, what, what I'm watching, the two-year uh, treasury yield, that usually acts as the governor or a cap for what the federal funds rate can do. Uh, that's sitting at 3.3% right now. So what that tells me is the bond market is giving the federal funds rate another 80, point, uh, 80 basis point hike uh, for the September meeting, at least as of today. I think they can get in another 75 uh, basis point raise. Uh, and I think the markets aren't going to like that very much. So so be prepared. You know, I'm, I'm just guessing, obviously, this is not individual investment advice, but we may have more downside to come and it may come a little bit sooner than most people think. We hope that you enjoyed that interview. Make sure that you like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any hard money content.